Hello everyone, my name is Dev, Dev Kulkarni and today I would like to talk about self-serve in PLM. Basically, how business intelligence reports can be created by end users and that's the reason why we call it self-serve. Also refer to it as democratizing BI. So let's take a look at uh, EQBI screen. I'm logging in here in a module called Build and Play where you create reports. Explore. And in Explore, it's pretty much like a normal search. And what I'm typing in here is change by project. Now change could mean several things. And the system is prompting me whether it's a change notice, it's change request, it's uh, various other things that uh, could mean change. In this case, I'm referring to change request. And that's uh, what I select. The system is intelligent. It figures out what the filters for this report might be and it's prompting me those uh, filters out here and there I have a report it's just an English phrase which led me to a report talking about changes by project automatically really I didn't have to know what the data model in team center in this case is I didn't have to do a whole lot of uh, coding to create this report all of this is drillable. I have a lot of information that I can sift through. Let's try and refine this and do another search. So what I'm doing here is count of open changes by project. Slightly different from what we did before. And there I have changes by project. I can uh, slice and dice this information and look at the same report through multiple perspectives. Let's do a further analysis. So distribution of changes by closure by project. These are all English phrases that I'm entering and the system figures out that what I'm looking for is basically a pie chart and giving me an output. So it's, it's actually quite simple to, to create reports uh, using self-serve, but there is a whole lot of things going on in the background. So basically we have natural language processing which is analyzing what is being typed in English. More so, there is a, a sem semantic concept which knows what changes are. It might know what an EBOM is and create a report appropriately. So the semantic concepts are aware of the domain that we are working in. And in this case, it is aware of the PLM domain and it knows what change ought to be and what users might look for it. So there are a lot of things that are going, going on behind the scenes by EQBI and it's making it that much easier for the report to be created and the user to, you know, run several queries to zero in into the information that he or she is uh, looking for. Let's go one step ahead and look at a bill of material with CAD geometry. As you can see, that's what I'm, I'm typing over here for part number demo engine as before it prompts me likely hits on what i'm looking for i can select engineering bomb in this case it also generated filters that it thought might be useful for this report uh, we just ran through that uh, filter screen and here we have the report on the left hand side it's showing a jet engine and on the right hand side it's showing the bill of uh, materials so what it has done in the background is it has downloaded these JT files from Team Center and it is rendering it on the browser uh, out here. And on the right hand side, you have the corresponding bill of material. Now, let me add something interesting to this report. Cost. Now, cost here is coming in from another source. In this case, it's Oracle, but it could be SAP or any other ERP system. I'm adding a node to the canvas below. adding attributes that I need, that is the actual cost and the target cost. And I run this report again. Now see the report, there are two additional columns, actual cost and target cost. Now what I can do is I can add a certain set of rules to format this data in the manner I want. For instance, if the actual cost is less or equal to the target cost, show this in green. There I have it. 
Now, not only is the column being highlighted in the manner in which we specified, but so is the JT image being uh, rendered on the screen. The user can play with this uh, on the screen itself. So imagine that you could use this information for projects that are delayed or uh, areas that, you know, there are concerns which could be shown in red, blue, yellow, whatever you choose. I can uncheck to shut off the display of certain parts that I'm not interested in seeing or enable it. Using the checkboxes, the user can disable the display of that particular item in the 3D geometry being shown here. Can do some more refinements in the display. Maybe I wish to see this in a different fashion. Maybe see a wire mesh instead of a solid. Or simply, you know, to change the opacity. Now, not all users have full access in Team Center to all the data. What happens to reports? Now, EQBI leverages the security model of Team Center, and really, you don't have to do anything special to make sure that users who are not authorized to see information uh, can see this information. It's, it's by default. So the uh, example that you just saw, uh, we were logged in as user Adam. We now log in as Jeff and run the same query. Bomb with cat geometry for part number demo engine. Engineering bomb. And there you have this. Now you, you can notice that there are many things that are missing on the jet engine that you see on the screen. That's because Jeff user does not have access to see all of the information for the jet engine. So as you can see, EQBI honors the security model of the application it is reporting out of, out of the box. Really, you don't have to do anything special to make sure that you, know, you assign different securities for the business intelligence user. Thank you.